She's huh. not really pro Second Amendment, though. Oh, she's not. She's, she's military. More for government restrictions. Oh, she is. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say the right of the government to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It said she former the military? right of the people. The people's everybody. That was the intent. Everybody's supposed to be armed. Because, you know, if we get invaded, everybody should be able to, you know, show up, pistol, rifle, be ready to rock. They want everybody to be armed. It's in their words. It's in the writings. It's in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with deer hunting. It's strictly self-defense. Because the whole idea was the Constitution was based on the idea that it's right in the Declaration of Independence that there's a creator. It doesn't matter whether you believe in him or not. There's a creator. It's assumed there's a creator. And therefore, we're entitled to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We own our bodies, basically. And if somebody tries to harm us, we have the right, comes from the creator, not man or government, to defend ourselves using lethal force. That's why. And then the people are the equals of their government. So you say, why have an AR-15? Why have semi-automatic? Why have machine guns, which you can still get, but obviously pre-1986 and takes a year to you know get approved. But at the end of the day, the people, all men and women, all men and women who are citizens are equals of everybody in government. We're equal. You're equal to the president of the United States. Joe Biden is not any more important in, than you or you or you or you or you, me or you. We're all on the same level. And so, therefore, that's why we have weapons. We're supposed to be competent and safe with them. So if we ever got invaded, we'll be the strongest nation in the world. To Because if you even if you take all of the members of the military, of all the world's military, and combine them into the world's largest army, they'll still be outnumbered by the over 100 million Americans that have weapons. So that was the intent. It's, you know, Admiral Yamamoto said during World War II or leading up to it that if we invade the United States, there'd be a rifle behind every blade of grass. That's, you know, if everybody's armed, they could potentially take out the enemy, even though they might get lost. You, you can't sustain those losses. And so that's the way that our republic would remain a free republic is if everybody had the most lethal weapons that existed. Trained, was competent, safe, and ready to go. If a bunch of shipping containers showed up and were shipped, hundreds of them shipped all over the country that had hundreds of killer robot dogs and drones, which the technology exists, and those things started roaming the neighborhoods and launching their little drones to fly around using facial recognition to take out specific people, because they have weapons, you know, just a simple, put a simple Glock in there. And I've seen these kind of robotic devices that do that with just regular Glocks. And the robot aims it, shoots, these things fly around and take out whoever they want in a local area. And they have guns, weapons, or they're armored. So your normal weapons don't penetrate them, which is why obviously people should have armor piercing rounds. It's totally possible something like that to happen. Can you imagine if a container ship shows up and hundreds of those things are full of killer robot dogs and they get shipped all over the place to certain destinations throughout the country? And then they open up and the little robot dogs come out and start taking out whoever they need to, showing up around military bases. You could take out a lot of people, a lot of military assets before anybody knew what the hell had happened. Mm-hmm. So the backup is always, what if that, hopefully it never happens, but at the end of the day, the intent was to be so armed, to be so dangerous, to be so lethal that any other country, any other foreign entity or power, it would be suicide because you could not overcome the American people, the whole body of the American people, as the founding fathers said. That's why I, everybody's supposed to be armed. I do believe that many Americans that were opposed <laughs> to guns recently like in the past three weeks changed their opinion well the past two three years especially with the blm stuff where the police are backing off and going we can't do anything and then everybody just helplessly watched their neighborhoods get burned down 
if you got your family and your parents and your elderly grandparents in your house and your babies are inside and people you got 30 people out front with Molotov cocktails wanting to burn your neighborhood down for whatever reason, maybe they think you got too much privilege, too much money or whatever. It's like, what are you going to do? It's like, you better have a, a, a rifle, a semi-automatic rifle with a 30 round magazine. What if all those people are armed or half of them are armed? It's like, you better have a semi-automatic. You better have high capacity magazines, especially if you're the only one that is healthy enough and safe enough to go after them. Because when society breaks down, police ain't coming for you. You're on your own. We just looked at the people of Ukraine. society is a polite society. And what you're describing happened, is happening in Ukraine right now. And the people didn't have weapons. They were teaching them to stuff rags in bottles full of gasoline, which is no defense uh, against Yeah, and try to invaded. throw them on the top of the tanks. But once you do that, then the tanks open fire and kill you and your family and probably all your neighbors in your apartment block. So we're sending weapons, including like the drones that you described. And we are, uh, well, the there Turks, was a, the, the Turkish, uh, people government has sent them some really good, sophisticated drones that are, you know, taking out a lot of Russian armor and tanks and vehicles. Now, my, my wonder is, are the Americans truly for this? Do they see the value of the people of Ukraine having weapons now to defend themselves against the invasion? Uh, from Russia. I think so. I th- I've seen that a lot too. Well, that's the funny part. You well, see a lot Russians of people are... praising the guns. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see a lot of people praising, oh, you know, like they're shipping all these guns to them, giving arming the citizens against Russia. But those are the same people that wouldn't arm our own civilians. <laughs> it's just a bit of irony. Yeah, they want the Ukrainian citizens to be armed, which now you're in a war and it's too late. If you ain't been training, now it's too late to try to get guns or ammunition or make sure your gun's zeroed. It's, it's too late to learn how to move and shoot or do force on force training where you get the closest thing that you're going to simulate a real world gunfight using um, non-lethal training munis- munitions. So when the invasion is happening, it's too late. You've lost. You know, as Sun Tzu said, if you want war, prepare for peace. If you want peace, prepare for war. And if you want to not ever have to worry about your country being conquered, you want to have as many of your citizens who are willing to do it and competent and safe enough to do it, to have every kind of lethal weapon and know how to use that. That's pistol, rifle, body armor, night vision, all of the stuff that's available to all Americans. Because like I said, it's like with technology the way it is, you can mass produce killer drones by the millions. And if you're able to conceal those, whether it's through shipping containers or other means or having people 3D printing them in their garages, and then when you have enough of them, you just unleash them and they're they're all pre-programmed to go to certain places where they know certain people are. And you can take out anybody that's a danger to whatever the imposing force wants to impose on them. Take them out. If you only have the police force, you only have the military armed. And because your government systems were hacked and they know every single one of your police officers and your people in the military, their home address, you can send drones to go stake them out, take them out. And now everybody that knows how to use guns and has them, the minority of them are taken out. And now you got killer drones on a disarmed population. You can impose your will. You don't like it, you get a bullet. That's the harsh reality. And when you listen to the things like that the Chinese government say, the generals and their intellectual elite say they totally intend and believe that they're kind of destined to kind of run shit around the world and take over and conquer. And they openly talk about ideologically subverting the West and weakening us and getting us to fight amongst ourselves. So they can basically do what they did to Hong Kong and get them under total control and use surveillance and social credit and video and AI to basically run and regulate every aspect of society and run it the way they want. And anybody gets in the way is they'll happily remove them from the battlefield one way or another. So you think the Democrats are trying to take away your guns? Well, they openly talk about it. Beto O'Rourke ran for president. Yes, we're going to take your AR-15. Yeah, we're going to take your semi-automatic pistol. People like that believe only the government should have a monopoly on force. They don't care that the Second Amendment is in the Constitution. It says everybody's supposed to be armed. They don't give a shit about that. 
the way they look at it is they want to control everything. And they know, I mean, at the end of the day, their policies are would eventually, if they were able to do what they really wanted to do, is why people have the guns to protect themselves against tyranny. And they, eventually it would cross the line. It would cause the people to start turning their guns on them. So is there a solution to uh, all of these shootings, like the school shootings? Absolutely. What is that? He should have been locked the fuck up, forcibly medicated, Baker acted. The police went to his house like, Who? I don't know, close to 40 times. Which person? The one right over here in Stoneman Douglas. Oh, okay. Everybody knew he was. The kids, even when the shooting was happening, they're like, they could hear the gunshots. They knew exactly who it was because that dude had been threatened to do it for years. So who's and so the, they didn't because of you know part of the things that Obama put in place, they didn't want to ruin his life, and so everything just got kind of expunged from his record. So he was able to go and buy that rifle when clearly he'd been saying for years he was going to murder his classmates and other people that went to that school. And yet they expunged everything because they didn't, you know, want to wreck his life. But at the end of the day, the dude had countless red flags. He was so messed you hold up. The and the school system responsible or the police force? That would be Scott Israel, that deputy, and, the, and Obama, and the rest of the, the federal lefties government. and the people in the school board that instituted those policies that allowed that the police to be called to that kid's house. I don't know, close to forty times when he was clearly mentally unstable clearly threatening to kill his classmates multiple times, wrote it on social media, openly talked about it, bragged about it, threatened people. People were scared of him. And like I said, when the kids were run, running off the campus that day, they knew they already were saying to each other who they thought it was that was doing it because he'd been saying it for years. And so when shit like that happens because of incompetent, stupid policies, it's the politicians cause the people idiots like Obama that don't respect the constitution that don't respect the second amendment that the, I mean, you allow something like that to happen. Well, there's two things you can control. You can control the people and you can control the guns that killed the people. And I think that the vast amount of people is, is pretty overwhelming. I think the easier solution is to control do work on background checks and that sort of thing. Jennifer, Republicans you want small, I don't gun? like guns and I'll never have a gun. So you never bought a gun. You've never been through a background check and you have absolutely zero idea what you're talking about right now. So I haven't even finished if my you want to buy a gun, you me. have to go through a background check, period. I don't. Okay. Because you're going, oh, we need to straighten back background checks. We have them. There's like 60,000 gun laws in the okay. books. I, I, I'm not in, in, in immersed in gun culture so i don't know the details my point is you can control the people or you can control the guns there's a lot more people than there are guns republicans want less government but it would take a lot more government to control all the people and get immersed in their lives and and that would be more government more people on the in the school system and the police force and all so i think that maybe if we tackle the gun situation what's that would be less gun? resources okay so what's the problem with the gun issue the, the background check what's the issue with background checks I didn't say anything that there was an issue. I said, said to we, control what guns are on the streets what ha, or, or the access, easy access for a guy like that or any of these school shooters to get guns. What can we do so that they can't so easily get them? Is there any way that we can set up our system that, he that there's not checks in a, place? There already are. Because if you go to buy a gun from a gun shop, you have to pass a background check. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. If somebody sells a gun to somebody else on a private sale, it's you still are supposed to do a background check on that. Sales do happen, but at the end of the day, you can buy barrels, you can use 3D printing and print the other parts of a gun that you need. Right. If you're in the mafia or so a gang, if, you can get guns and just shave off the VIN number. Or you can rob a house that. and steal some of these guns. Number. Bottom line is there's, there's just probably billions of guns floating around the world at this point, especially in our country. And the guns get just like they did in my family, and I would imagine yours. They get passed down generation after generation. So, when my when my one of my grandfathers died, he had like forty five pistols. The dude liked to shoot. He had lots of pistols, lots of ammunition. He was armed to the teeth. Mm -hmm. And so that's just one family member. And so when you look at that throughout the the decades, it's, 
you know, there's a lot of guns in society, so you're not going to get rid of them. You're not going to control it. At the end of the day, criminals are the ones that are the problem. And that's the bottom line. And criminals are not being locked up. The Stoneland Douglas shooter, that kid was a red flag. But because of criminal justice reform instituted by Obama, 40-something police calls to his house because he was unstable and it was a problem and threatening people, threatening kids at school, got expelled or suspended multiple times. And it's obvious that, you know, it's like Maya Angelou said, when somebody tells you or shows you who they are, believe them the first time. He'd been saying it for years and then he was allowed to pass his background check because of legal policies that Democrats put in place. The whole conversation is about gun control. Let me finish. So the other thing is when you look at stuff, because we've done a bunch of news stories about this. When you look at like guys like George Gascon in LA that are criminal justice reform, you know, no, no bail policies. If you rob somebody or beat somebody up or you you just get no cash bail. In other words, come in, we'll do the paperwork, just show up for your court appearance. And then you're right back out on the street. So you can go right back to, committing more crimes and then people like in san francisco wonder why nothing's happening it's you have a it, you, when you look at like um the broken window thing or like what giuliani did to clean up new york and just simple things like guys jumping over the little turnstiles instead of paying their fare fare to get in the subway what they noticed was like they would let that stuff slide but under the kind of like the broken windows thing which is like putting the vibe out there that nobody gives a shit so when you allow people to just jump over the turnstile and not pay their subway fare, and then, you know, even if cops are watching this, it just communicates nobody gives a shit. Oh, you want to spray paint a car? Go ahead. You want to break the windows out? Go ahead. Nobody gives a fuck anyway, so who cares? Go ahead and destroy it. Piss in the floor. Who cares? But if you keep everything clean, if the train gets to the end of the line and there's paint on it, you, you remove the paint. You don't allow cars to stay in the line and got spray paint it because then other people spray paint it or piss in the floor or throw garbage or live in a car, or whatever happens to be. And so the point being is that you address all those things. And it's like this. So what they started doing was that they started arresting the guys that were jumping over the turnstiles and skipping out on their paying their subway fares. But there were so many of them doing it. And then when a cop had to go all the way back downtown to the police station and do the paperwork, five, six hours. So he's just wasted his whole shift with one dude that was skipping out on a subway fare. And so eventually they got buses. <laughs> and so they would, you know, march the dudes up to the buses and they had people on the buses to do the paperwork and they would get chained out of the seats. And when the bus was full, then they would take them to jail. And that solved the problem because the dudes that were jumping over the turnstiles were also the guys doing the raping and the drug dealing and the gun crimes and the robbery and all the other shit. And so when went after, went after the little things like that, the subways became safe, they became clean, and the criminals were sitting in jail. Because the police know, it's like the same people keep getting, you know, and until they do something really super bad, they're just committing all kinds of crimes left and right, and they just keep filtering through the system. So they don't ever really So you're get saying it, it's more efficient to control the people and not fuck with the gun culture anymore and just continue to put the all law, their efforts on controlling the people instead. The law-abiding citizens are not the problem. It's the criminals are the problem, and the policies are like, we're being compassionate. They've had it rough. We don't want to ruin their lives. We want to make them a productive member of society. But like my aunt talked about, who was a 20 years in the, in the prison industry, it's like, there are people that need to be locked up. Anybody that works in law enforcement or in the prison system, it's like there's some people that need to be there. They're a dangerous society and they'll always be. So they always need to be locked up. And, you know, what's happening is there's too many of those people that are allowed to just run rampant in society. But also, as far as criminal justice reform is concerned, you got to, like, what, you know, I talked about it in Mastering Yourself. You got to have a way to rehabilitate people. And I like what they've done in Germany where people kind of have their own apartments, they have their conjugal visits with their family. The the goal is to get them out and become productive members of society. Make them more civilized. Yes. Instead of, you know, like what we do now in the United States, we throw them in a dog kennel, basically. And then we, you know, let them intermix and join gangs and murder and rape each other and 
and you know basically continue to be criminals to each other and just sit back and, and watch worse. the watch the butchery happen mm -hmm. and then they get out and they're they come out oftentimes literally worse than they were and more psychopathic than when they went in because of what they experience in prison so the idea is these you know people that are it's like the drug addicts in San Francisco. You're enabling their behavior. You give them free insulin. You give them money so they can buy their drugs. Stuff so cheap because of the fentanyl. And they're like, hey, I'd just rather live on the streets and do fentanyl or heroin until I drop dead because this is a better life. You know, the government gives me enough. I just need a tent. You know, there's, there's, there's free pussy on the streets. You know, they just have sex in the streets. You know, girls that don't have mo enough money, they'll give up the pussy for heroin or whatever it happens to be. So... You know, it's like you got you taking your family like we were talking about Venice the other other night. And it's just how you just, I mean, we see the same thing in, in Miami that you get off downtown Miami, the interstate. And it's starting to look like San Francisco tents everywhere. People sitting out there doing drugs. And it's like, oh, we're being compassionate. You know, they're not harming anybody. Well, I mean, they're harming each other. And some of them are criminals. But you don't want to see that. You want a nice, clean city. When we were growing up, you didn't see that shit. No, it South Beach was kind of sketch like that in the 80s before it turned nice. But not on the scale it is now. I mean, you look at San Francisco with the cars and the break-ins in the cars. And you got people now that are like leaving their doors open, their hatchbacks open, so the people don't break their windows. So they can go and rifle through their car, but there's, they've taken everything out, so there's nothing to steal. They just don't want to get their windows broken. So they literally say, hey, it's open. Check it out. There's nothing in here. Wow. It's nuts. And they keep voting for the same people. 96% of all incumbents get reelected. So that's a big part of the problem is that all in of every us, state, all of us vote for the same people over and over and over and over again. Look at Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, all have been there for, um, what's his name? We Lindsey need, Graham. We need term limits. Um, what, what's holding that up, by the way? The, the people The people charge. that don't they want term don't limits. Want term limits. They're running the show. Why would they want to end their careers? Ah, <laughs> uh, so bad. So you get locked into a, and it's basically you get the elite, the oligarchs, the people with the money that that's right. are, keep them in power. And so that's why that's the wizard behind the curtain. Exactly. You they talk about what they're going to do and then they get into office and it doesn't matter. And if it's a Democrat they or Republican. <laughs> they they do the opposite. Oftentimes mm -hmm. they're doing what the elite want. And, you know, like nowadays with the World Economic Forum and you listen to Klaus Schwab and. And then you see what they talk about, what their agendas are and their lectures are all out there. And you look at what guys like Biden or Trudeau or whoever happens to be in the West, you look at what they actually do, totally aligned, totally in lockstep with the World Economic Forum. And that's why oftentimes they're doing the opposite of what they promised when they were running is because they're, they all see the world the same way. Eventually want to have a global authority that they keep talking about. That's why russia's in the way the chinese are kind of in the way the chinese communist party and they're trying to bring all of the global mafia elite of the world together so they can run and regulate every aspect of everybody's lives globally and they get to fly around their the private whole world jets is and run by mafias organized crime basically i mean these autocrats that it's 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 organized crime and then what you're talking about is organized crime. Like, is there any place in the world that's not? Well, Benj I think it was Benjamin Franklin said, he said, where liberty dwells, there is my country. <laughs> where are those countries? <laughs> well, the United States, you know, another thing, um, I can't remember. Was it Benjamin Franklin, a republic, if you can keep it? Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, it was Jefferson. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson. We like when they were. Come doing the constitutional convention and it came out and are like, well, what do we got? You know, do we have a king and a king, queen? Like what kind of government we got? He says a republic, if you can keep it. Because the, the end of the day, the elite are always going to try to take your republic and your rights and your liberty. And Lord Acton, who was a very famous British politician, he said liberty exists in the distribution of power, tyranny and the concentration of it. 